Okay, Dodge pickup, Dodge Ram truck, whatever. Ram, so 1500. Ram 1500. 2013. 2013, 1500. The horn doesn't work. Garage across the street already changed the horn the module. Clock, the clock spring. The clock spring. Yeah, because okay. it goes through there, and that's what they were hoping it was going to be. But okay, and there's some um, type of Lin bus failure. There's a code. LIN code. Okay, and it, it looks like everything talks on a Lin line. Yes, and it goes from the horn pad to the right, like cruise control switch area. Okay, and. I thought yesterday or the day before when I hit the cruise on and off button, it didn't work. And today it is working. Okay. The horn still doesn't work, but none of the steering wheel controls work. You can't get into the dash with the arrows and change anything. Okay. But it all goes to the right switch. And, and they only changed out. the clock spring. They didn't That's change it. any kind of module. And it, and it all looks like it goes to that right switch before it goes to a steering column control module, which is on the column somewhere. Okay. And then it goes into a star junction. You know, and then from there it transmit on a different can line over to the body module because if okay. you hit go to body module, you can make the horn beep. Okay. You know. So all right. Cool. All right. We'll see. We'll we're. see what codes we are and go from there. We're gonna scan all modules. Left low beam control circuit short to battery or open. That's in the BCM. Lost column with radio. Lost column with BCM. That's in the integrated center stack. Steering column control module. Lin bus. That's our guy. Speed control switch one circuit high. I think that's the one we're gonna be chasing, the steering column control module. So cruise control on off. Is that the one my brother said wasn't working? I don't see any data that shows me that. Pushing the on off cruise control button. Let's start the truck. And I got a low beam out message, matches the code, pressing the cruise on off. Hitting the cancel button, I don't see any changes there. And radio controls, some of that, yeah, nothing's working up here. Yeah, okay. You said the cruise control light lit up when you hit the button? It did. It didn't for me. Yeah, I, I yeah, had it this, running. This one here. Yeah, I did. I had it running. Start it back up. See, it, it was weird. It, I'm yeah. suspecting there could be something. They have this switch in stock. But when I hit that button, yeah, see, it was. I got a it, low beam out, too. It lit up right here when I was outside. But okay. None of the other stuff worked. OK. But I knew that when I first tried it, nothing worked. But then out there, I touched it, and it worked. It's not working now, so all right. I'd, I'd rather it not work than start working. Yeah. Let's see what kind of data we have from this steering wheel control module. Let's hit the on off button. So that's gonna be cruise on off, it's that guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a, a data pid from it. On, off, uh, resume. Yeah, resume plus is working. Resume minus, it's changing this cruise input voltage, this guy right here. Uh, in the resume, cruise Excel resume says set 1.68 volts changes there. Set D cell, this guy, there's my minus one. There's your this would be your plus. My cancel. That's this one. So those are all working, all four of those switches. And then we have this pad. Let's see what we got. Watch this arrow up button. see any pids changing there on this screen I see nothing changing on any of those buttons scroll down let's do the same just look at everything all together seeing no change in this guy whatsoever voice command no changes 
SWS cell. I think that's maybe this guy right here, possibly. And then there's your phone. Arrow, could be that. Yeah, man, none of those are, these aren't doing anything. Neither is the horn. Where's my horn on here? Horn switch. Not set. Okay. These pads, this one works. Horn doesn't. I see no data parameters here. I don't know what each button is called on here. That's why I was just looking at all of them together. I'd like to see the steering wheel control module on the diagram. <clears throat> I'd also like to know what button's what on the left. That's gonna be radio stuff. Okay, all right, let's do this. I'm gonna clear these. Let's see if, uh, yeah, these come immediately back. Lin2 bus active code, the U100900. We're gonna look that code up and we're gonna get a wiring diagram. Let's just see what the horn circuit shows. Right steering wheel switch. Steering control module. Um, I'm not showing the bi-directional test of the horn blowing with the BCM. My brother said that that already works. See the BCM right here controls the horn relay and then it's gonna get that information uh, it looks like on the can high and can low, can C. And then the horn switch is feeding into the right steering wheel switch and the right steering wheel switch is a LIN bus between the steering control module that my brother mentioned that's not inside. So one of the switches is a module and that communicates on the LIN and then that's gonna go uh, eventually the LIN computer data lines. I'm sure there's a tie in here. I don't know which module would transfer the LIN bus information to the BCM. It could just be the BCM itself. Let me see. Which LIN bus was that? Shoot, I need to go back. Because there can be multiple LIN buses on a car. So this is LIN, just says LIN bus. This says LIN bus here, but it's designated CBC3. So I'm looking at that box right there. You see, that then it says there's another LIN down here, these two wires. That's uh, LIN CBC2 and CBC1, those are all different networks. Those are all different LIN networks. I'm looking for one that just says LIN bus, I guess. Yeah, this one just says LIN bus. It's light, light green and light blue. Let's see if that horn was the same color. That's black. <laughs> ah, hey, real quick. Um, the right steering wheel switch yes. is on a LIN bus. Yes. So that's probably what goes through the clock. So, and here's the thing, this right side works. All the data parameters work off this. I could see voltages changing when I did it. And, yeah. and I saw it on the scan tool. Yeah. I, I all, but these ones do not. Yeah. So which one, what are they calling the right? I think it's that one. Switch is this one. Yeah. But that one's not working. No, but I mean, the data would be processed through this one down. Yeah, so. I, I need a complete diagram yeah. of the steering it's wheel. I don't like, I, <laughs> see, the dotted, a lot of shit, see the dotted man. line. Like yeah. I need a complete view. This is where a factory diagram is probably gonna be more helpful. Maybe the radio will show me those. Right steering wheel switch. Yeah, right remote radio switch. I think it's the one that's not working. So the right remote radio switch, the left remote radio switch, which I believe is the left pad, the horn switch, that just sends signal return. And it's the right steering wheel switch that, man, I want, I'd love to expand that. Let's see what this offers me when I do that. OEM testing, how about some Let's see if there's a bulletin. Steering wheel wiring safety recall. This recall applies only to above vehicles equipped with electronic vehicle information center built through that date. 
So the steering wheel wiring harness on about a million of the above vehicles may become chafed by the driver's airbag module retainer spring ends. A chafed steering wheel wire harness could cause an electrical short and or an inadvertent driver airbag deployment. Inadvertent driver airbag deployment during certain driving conditions may increase the risk of crash. Steering wheel wiring harness will be inspected and if needed, the steering wheel wiring harness will be rerouted and secured to prevent wire chafing and protective caps will be installed on the airbag retainer springs. Hey, Danner, check out this safety recall, man. Yeah, I don't know if this, this is me or not. I'll have to double check. You know, we're right here in that range. Models, I, I guess I need to look up the DS, like DJ, D2, D, you know, whatever. But it talks about chafing uh, of the driver's airbag module retainer springs, chafing the uh, harness that can cause electrical short or inadvertent airbag deployment. Nice. Yeah, um, but they show, so discharge, they're having you take the column uh, or steering wheel off, and then this is the harness that you're supposed to check for chafing. Inside the steering wheel. Uh, mm -hmm. well, that would be cool. I mean, that would, be cool as long as the airbag doesn't blow up on me while I'm in there checking things. Holy oh, yeah. horn, wi <laughs> horn wiring harness too. Horn wiring harness clip location. So we're we're relocating that stuff. But there's there's a recall on this. This is a recall. Mark harness for reference. So they're they're actually showing you where to reroute it. Cut so the chafing on a clip inside something on the airbag clip, and they want you to put like caps over that too yeah they want it's it's chafing on on this guy when that's the back of the horn yeah pack. see the rubber clips they're having you yeah. put on the airbag module see the problem is with that is you know sometimes i would see that and i'd say yeah go to the dealer but they're already deep in this so mm -hmm. that's going to turn into well that might not be it and it you know what i mean so you're just going to well, the other thing is when I was looking at this, um, this is in the premium radio. They're showing like the right remote radio switch, left remote radio switch. That's these buttons on the left that aren't working, I believe. You know, think, the radio. Oh, there's controls underneath. Yeah, that changes the channel uh, and this is the volume. Okay, I missed that. Okay. I think that's those are the ones that do. I the didn't radio. see the switches underneath. Let me this go. This one has like the phone, like, or like my truck. It has the phone and the speaker yes. stuff. But the, all these do is this. Thing. The menu up top. But the radio controls are. Oh, uh, I missed that. Okay, got it. Okay, let me go back to the data real quick. This is on the driver's side, and this one's passenger side. All right, let's let's play with those buttons. See what it does. That's pushing up on the left one, down. Those aren't working either. Pushing up and down on the left one, up and down on the right one, and they're not changing anything either. Okay. Yeah, those aren't working either. Okay, so those go to the right steering wheel switch. I need more info on this guy. Steering wheel switch right. That's the one that works. Hmm. Left. I think I think our problem's in here, and the reason I say that, the right steering wheel switch itself runs off the Lin bus, and that's working. The left steering wheel switch that I'm looking at in this picture feeds over to the right, yeah. and that's where the harness, that's where that gets chafed. Because none of that talks, all of that talks to the right. Yeah. So our pro. It comes off one Lin. One Lin bus line and, for. And that would probably know if it's missing signals prior to it. You would think maybe would it know? I do have a Lin bus code. Yeah. I, I need to research that code, but it, I I think this is telling us our problem is in the steering wheel. Okay, let's look this code up. Lin 2 bus U1009. Lin bus 2 diagram. That's all they're giving me. <laughs> Body control, rain. That's like, that can't be all of it. They're not even showing the switch on there. Module compass, mirror inside rear view. What the heck? Okay, OEM testing. So, steering wheel control module, that guy. 
right steering wheel control switch. Speed control switch includes the cruise control. Cruise control functions are resistor, multiplexed, and are hardwired inputs to the steering angle sensor microprocessor. The switch also contains the circuitry of a LIN local interface network slave node which provides source current for and communicates the switch or sensor states of the electronic vehicle information center switches the remote radio switches and the horn switch over the LIN bus to the SAS which is the steering angle sensor microprocessor which is also the LIN master node and a gateway to the controller area network all right that's how the BCM gets its info is it changes the SAS, takes that LIN message and transfers it to the CAN for the BCM to control the horn. I hope you guys kind of follow on that. DTC will set if there is a loss of LIN bus comm between the steering control module and the right steering wheel switch. How am I getting that data for the right switch? LIN bus circuit opener sorted, fused, circuit open or shorted ground circuit open right steering wheel switch clock spring see why they changed the clock spring okay this is active before proceeding verified connectors are properly made see to verify a loose connection at any of the sccm connectors may cause this dtc i don't know what the sccm is offhand turn ignition on is it active yes it is go to two check for lin bus circuit locked condition at the right steering wheel switch Actuate the horn with the scan data read DTCs. Does the scan tool display this DTC as active? It does, but I don't even have to actuate the horn to do that. If it doesn't, they're telling you to replace the right steering wheel switch. Check voltage on LIN bus circuit at steering wheel switch, speed control switch. Turn ignition off, disconnect the right steering wheel switch. Turn ignition on, measure voltage of the LIN bus circuit. Is voltage present? I have those data parameters change okay, I'm just trying to understand this flow chart Here's your voltage if it is go to 7 if it's not go to 4 LIN bus circuit open between right steering wheel switch and clock spring this is matching that bulletin on 4 LIN bus circuit short to ground and clock measure resistance check voltage of LIN bus at clock spring check voltage of fused circuit okay I have some questions on some of that flow chart Okay, so this is the code U1009 LIN2 for the steering control module, and the other one was LIN2 for the body control module. And let's go back to that. Our code list, I just had a left, on the body control module, we just had a left low beam circuit code. Steering column control module is the SCCM. Okay, let's see if the radio's getting these signals. It's not seeing any of that. Just looking at the data parameters for the steering wheel for the radio no changes lin 2 bus flow charts not clear on that code man in particular where it says that the this theory of operation uh, hardwired inputs to the steering angle sensor microprocessor i'm not seeing that computer like I have a steering angle sensor, but that's in the electronic power steering system and it's just a data pit. The switch also contains circuitry of the LIN slave node, which provides source current for and communicates the switch or sensor states of the electronic vehicle information switches, the remote radio switches and horn switches over the LIN bus to the SAS, which is the steering angle sensor, which is also the LIN master node and gateway to the CAN. So, I need to start, stop farting around and just pull the column or a steering wheel and take a look at some of this stuff. Okay, step three, we're measuring LIN bus stuff, so that's what we're doing. I gotta find that bulletin. It was like the radio. The right steering wheel switch, I think that's how I found it. They clicked on that. And then, yeah, and then I looked up bulletins. Steering wheel wire, we're gonna pull that one up too. RCR3615, RCR3615, so same OEM ref number for the airbag and for the wiring system. So this should be the same recall. 
All right, let's do this. Let me disconnect the battery. Okay, battery's unplugged. Disconnect battery. Wait two minutes for a system capacitor to discharge before performing this procedure. This is the only way, sure way to disable SRS. Failure to take proper precautions could result in accidental deployment. At no time should any source of electricity be permitted near the inflator on the back of the non-deployed airbag. When carrying a non-deployed bag, the trim cover or airbag cushion side of the unit should be pointed away from the body to minimize injury in the event of accidental deployment. Yeah. Move the two upper shroud screws. Those are already off. Release the steering column tilt lever and lower the column to its downward position for easiest driver bag removal. There are three drivers, retainer access holes on the instrument panel side of the hub located at two and six and 10. Steering wheel must be rotated to bring each of these access holes up to 12, one at a time for access removal. Insert short blade tip A of a DAB removal tool or blade of an equivalent prying tool in either of the upper two o'clock or 10 o'clock access holes of the steering wheel hub cover trim. Be certain to place the blade of the tool on the inboard steering wheel hub side of the airbag retainer clip. Push the handle of the tool downward of the blade. Okay, so there's some kind of clips. A DAB removal tool. So I, I there's some removal tool for this. There's like locking tabs. Uh, there's the tabs. Here's what you're pushing on. Those guys. One, two, and three. Those are your locking pieces. Oh, I see the access ports. They're just big giant holes. I was like looking at, at like all of these things. That's not the hole, that's not the access port. The access port is this cutout right here. And that clips way inside. Let's see if I can see it. Am I showing it? Yeah, there's your clip right there. Yeah. Just got a shot of the what you're playing with. <laughs> it looks shitty. I'm like, it's stuck up. Like, I have it, but I'm not. I'm like, I'm so. Oh. Stuck up. Ah, <laughs> you had it. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not even going right, to look. I'm going to let yeah, you look. Let me look. Let me look. Light. It's there. This already has rubber tips on it. So the recall was done. The recall was done. Yeah, look at it. Let's see the rubber tips. Oops. See the rubber tip? Yeah. Those two guys right there. And that keeps the wire where it's supposed to be? Uh, that keeps... Well, that's the airbag one. But like any of your chafing might be like back in here. Well, it shows pictures of where it's chafed. Let's see. Right here. Inspect chafing on or damage on the six-way pigtail. What's the six-way? This one here that goes down into the clock spring. I do see like a little... Was this re... I see a little mark right here. This was... I don't know if that's there right there. That's just for one of the horns. Either any one of these are for the horn though. These two guys? And up here. It's like any one of them. Okay, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. But then your Lin line's probably gonna be whatever's coming into here. Right, but I mean, this guy's working. Like when I hit these buttons, when I hit these buttons, it's working like on scan data. So that's why I don't understand the code. And, and actually not this one, sorry, it's this side. We're just opposite. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Let me flip this up. Let's get this at the 12 o'clock position. Does it look like it's been relocated and There's repaired? There's a zip tie in here that someone might. Yeah, we, we don't want to cut that. There, there these two wires, there's some insulation here where they all branch, all the horn buttons branch, but this one here, maybe it rubbed into the zip tie area though, right? And cut something. Going horn here. wire harness clip location, horn wiring harness. Oh, dude. What do you see? This wire is broke. <laughs> hell yeah. Huh? Hold on. I said, hell yeah. Let me see. <laughs> It, it, I can see it moving. I in see the, it too. In the connector. I see it. Is that the wire we're looking for? I don't know because the, the information I'm getting is, is conflicting. But yeah, that's definitely broken. I see it. Right there. <laughs> so how the hell do you fix that? 
<laughs> pull, well, we have to pull this connector off. Like, pull that guy out. But I want to know what wire that is. Me too. It's yellow. And, and me getting that information um, is going to be difficult. You know, unless this was tugged on, we are going to have to cut that zip tie. This looks like the recall was done. Yeah, I mean, that could have been tugged at any point trying to unplug it, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. I don't know how we fix that. That We would almost need the steering wheel unless I pull the pin. I just We'll just cut that zip tie. We'll okay. Take a picture of it so you know how it's sitting. Yeah. There's more than one wire broken. Huh? We have two broken wires. Oh, really? Yeah. I guess just when I pulled, while I was pulling this out, like just kind of, it was looped right there. Like, it, yeah. And I just pulled on this and like that one came out too. So I wonder if you can buy a steering wheel harness or do we take these pins out and solder them back in and snap Dude, them Dude, look back how in. small they are. Yeah, so th that was looped. This was just looped back here further. Okay. And it was zip tied all around that whole piece. Okay. So that gives me some slack. I have a feeling it was like too tight, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where their loop was. Uh-huh. Usually yeah. this tool goes in this way and pushes it out of the way. Like that. I'll, I'll get some voltage measurements when we're done to see what circuits those are, just for everyone else. Because right now this is simply like following a freaking recall and and getting a little bit lucky uh -huh. so this went in with the 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 like the square going up yeah towards the yeah clip so then we need to you're not gonna open that up. No, I usually what I do is I, I'll peel this back. Yes. And I'll actually solder it yep. into this part. Yep. You know what I mean? Maybe we you got some small wire laying around, we'll we'll solder it and then um and then extend it. There's not enough room to do that, huh? And then you're gonna have another connector you gotta hide in there. I think yeah. the yeah. best bet is to do what you said 100 percent. and really you know what i mean i should be calling chrysler and seeing about getting the steering wheel electronics harness 100 percent. that's like three strands that's it that's it right. well it's like super tiny five yeah. or six but usually i'll put this in here i've done the same you know what i mean yeah and then i'll i'll like solder it to this and then crimp this shut a yes. little bit or something yes I don't know how I'm going to hold this and do this. I know. Because that's such a weird loop up top. Mm -hmm. And that would be enough. Yeah. Just that. Yep. To solder that. And... Yep. Oh, I got the shakes, dude. Coffee. I think that's gonna be good. We'll as long as it's not, the solder's not too fat. Oh, I heard it click. Sorry, I didn't have an extra hand to show you guys that, but I just pushed that down in there and uh, I heard it click. And I've got one more to do. Then I'll get some electrical signals on these two guys for you. I'm just not sure, like, the info I guess I'm a little fuzzy on is, this information on this switch was working and it said that this guy has the lin bus going to it from the other switches it all goes to this guy and then then runs down um how is this information being transferred on the lin bus if the lin bus wire was broken we had a code for the lin bus wire so uh, there's information i'm just not 100 percent sure on as far as the network goes and diagrams, I really needed some factory service info and it's missing on this. So I'll get, at least when we're done, I'll, I'll at least get the two electrical signals on the yellow and green wire. I'm not gonna be able to show them to you in a diagram, I don't think. Okay. One's back in. 
I, I didn't know how to release it. Uh, I, I actually went down <laughs> from the backside. The backside and went above and pushed on the plastic. There's a little plastic tab, and then that went in deep. And then I got my pick tool. And I pushed on the top part here and pushed it back out of the way. I don't know why this one's not releasing. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice. And hopefully we're putting them back in the right spot. We are. I always like the lighter trick. It's so clean. Yep. So this is a repair bailing out another garage. Just trying to help. Indicating to them that really the right fix is the connect this entire harness connector inside of here. Would you agree? I would agree. So if they have any other issues down the road, you know, this is what they need to do to replace it. And this is separate, I should add, from the airbag circuit. So this is not a safety issue. If these were airbag circuits, we would not be doing this. Would you? That's the shakes, man. Somebody accused me of being an alcoholic for, oh, really? for that. I'm like, dude, it's just coffee. Okay, shove it back in there. I'm gonna put too much solder on this. Ah, oh, it'll be all right. I, I stuffed it in with a tool. It looks like it's in the whole way. Yep. So then you should be able to. All right, we'll plug it in and I'll get some signals. I'm gonna plug the battery back in. Yeah, just leave the air bag out. We don't need that right now. We'll we do not. Put that on last. Sweet. All right, do we have a horn? Yes, we do. Key's still off, but we have horn. Hey, is that the horn working? Yep. All right, lab scope. Volts DC, this would be our yellow wire first. That's the yellow wire, let's turn the key on. I mean, I have a ground here. Nothing on that yellow wire, let's see what we got on the blue green wire. Got a five volt ref. On the green, pressing buttons. None of those buttons. Underneath, nothing there. Underneath, you guys aren't seeing. Nothing there, no changes. There we go, that's these guys. Interesting that that, so those are direct signals. Those were working before. So maybe I broke the, maybe the green wire was good. Oh, these guys here, we're definitely got changes up on the dash. Oops, changing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Wasn't paying attention. That's definitely working. Radio. Oh yeah, changing stations. That's the from the, the button underneath. Changing radio stations, that's cool. Up and down, then the one on this side should be volume control. There we go. So it looks like from what I'm seeing, the green wire was, you see on the lab scope here too, different, different pull down circuit. So the resume pulls down a little bit, the set pulls down a little bit more, on off pulls all the way down cancel pulls not quite all the way down one sig single signal circuit five volt pull down designs all right so this is the yellow circuit i see nothing on this let's go on a smaller time base here so i don't see anything on that circuit like what what's communicating on this yellow wire Listen to that exhaust leak. These buttons are working now. Maybe as a, you know what? That might be a ground wire. And then that's why those signals 
weren't able to be recognized. Yeah. That's what it that's what it is. Those those are communication signals. That's the second one over. Third, fourth one over, five volt. Their ground. That's my There's five volts on that one. That one's a steady five. Okay. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that that's a ground. That would have been a ground for this module. Interesting. So it looks to me, and I don't know for sure, but according to the service info, this has the LIN bus on it. This, I should have taken some measurements before we fixed this, but my guess is that we would not have been seeing this signal right here properly with that yellow wire being broken which i believe is the ground for this module now we might have seen Linbus signals as far as other modules talking on that wire uh, which is a black wire it looks like which is what the diagram showed but um this one would not have been transferring the the data from this side and from the switches underneath that go to this and then communicate on the LIN bus with the ground wire being broken, which is what this first wire is right here. That is a ground. And I wish I would have shown that a little bit more with it unplugged. We would have seen high voltage on that wire on this side. And then as far as the messages go, I believe if we would have measured here, because this is spliced in, we would have still seen these LIN bus messages. They wouldn't have been exactly the same because now, now this guy's talking, right? Now, now this guy's talking too. And so that does make sense then that we had a LIN bus code here, even though these switches were working because for some reason, these guys are hardwired. These guys are not on that same LIN bus. And, and I'm, I can prove that by simply showing you again look you press these switches like they're working i'm on a faster time base now let's, let's slow it back down so you see it All right 10 volts where we were before okay that's why this worked let's see if we can see lin bus message changes i doubt we will be able to pick them up but let's try uh, let's Set a trigger. We'll go 50. There's 50 milliseconds. Now let's push some of these other ones. Yeah, we're not going to be able to pick out messages like that. Just changing radio stations, trying to look at that network signal, and I'm just, I'm not going to see it. There's radio up, down, up, down on the display on the cluster. All right, but that's what I believe we're seeing. If we had a diagram to show us that, that would be cool. Um, I'll see what I can come up with, but I think I'm done here, guys. And I apologize uh, for, you know, really the lack of anything of any substantial value, but yeah. So last part, that needs to be zip tied back together, right? This clip in here, right? We need to put the zip tie around there. This already had the recall done based on the rubber tabs that were on the airbag module, but that's what led me in this direction. Hopefully you guys learned something from this. We'll see you next time. Last piece, guys, I forgot. Let's just scan it and make sure that those codes are gone. We're gonna do clear all codes first. Now we, we do have an airbag code here. We will have an airbag code. And we'll do a code scan again. Just airbag codes, nice. Notice my uh, steering column control module, zero codes. Cool. Airbag, airbag. Awesome. Done for real this time.